All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. We're three years in a row, four years in a row? 16, 17, 18, four years. Four years. Four years. We're with Justin Lovato. That's right. Former Jimbo. IDA president. That's right. Are you on the board of the IDA now? I You're a trainer. I am a board, a trainer, all the above, nice. yes. And we're in the Buff and Shine booth, and we have a ton to talk about with Buff and Shine. Some really yes. cool innovations, I think. Uh, but catch us up to speed on you. What's going on? JL, Showroom Shine, what's going on there in Florida? Uh, Besides well, kale smoothies and avocado. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it actually... JL Showroom Detailing. Excuse me. But, you know, I've been I called many corrected. things, and I still like that name. I got I, most know, of it, if right? If I ever had to drop out and come back in, I'd probably go with Showroom Shine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, everything's good. Uh, shop as busy as can be, you know. Having the leadership role in the industry really allows me to translate that back to my own business and, and utilize that for marketing and content and having more market share. Okay. Because I could, you know, basically use that as leverage to gain more momentum with my marketing and because the it customers. separates you from other detailers? Correct. Okay, got it. It takes it away from being just the common core shop. You know, it really puts and elevates me to be the go to shop. Got it. Educated products, everything. Because we, I get firsthand at knowing what's coming, get to right. use it and understand it quicker than right. the next guy. What have been some products that you have implemented in, let's say 2019, since we're at the tail end, what are a couple products that um, you've implemented over the past year in your shop that really help with either efficiency uh, or helping a customer understand a product or, uh, or a service, I guess, um, or Maybe it wasn't in 2018 that you implemented no, it. No, no, I would say the recently. strongest thing that I've implemented, and it's always been something, but something that's really, you know, helps is retention. Figuring out how to Love get that. clients to come back, and yep. then also how to keep them satisfied when you sell a service and a product that's supposed to last for X amount of years. Right. How to maintain that on their original investment so they could get their entire return on investment with them coming back, so now they're back in your front door. Right. They've already spent X amount on this service. Right. What can I do to retain and maintain that service without you know, making the situation resistant against what they want to spend? Right. I love that, because no one talks about that. Everyone's after, how do I get more clients? How do I get the new client? How? It's like, what about your current database of clients? Why aren't you selling to them? Those are people that are even easier to sell to. Yeah. So yeah. how? what have you done to do that to, to sell more to your same database of clients when it comes to customer relations i'm really strong on that because i love being able to call my clients there's a lot of systems out there that will allow you to text and right. email which is great and i actually am one of the things i'm going to do next year because there's an overload right now of actually personally giving that touch to call them back individually Got and it. have that conversation so that's something that i do as a seasonal and an annual service and i say seasonal because you know, let's face it. Because there's seasons in Florida. There's seasons all across the U.S. Right. Seriously. Right, right. You know, think about it. Our world is built on seasons. Totally. So why not? And that doesn't change no matter where you go. Right. So if you offer a seasonal maintenance service, that will always accommodate whatever that vehicle has seen and gone through with the elements. And customers, I think that makes sense to them when it it's relates. like, hey, it's been three or four months. It's, yeah, the season's changing, the time changed, yeah. the weather's getting different. Yeah, yeah I probably should you like- do it in it's a manner that the customer, to, the end user, the client right. understands the language. Yes, yeah, it's probably time to do, do a car. So you're actually calling everyone. And wow. reminding them, and then I, I, I note when I call them and if I left a message. That way I'm not calling them back to back like a solicitor either. Right. I'm, it's not a push. So do you have a aggressive. CRM in place that helps you keep track of all this or do you just do it taking notes? No, I actually, I between two, I use a uh, the RoadFS system. Okay. Um, and then for my database of clients and then I take my Outlook calendar okay. for all my current clients that I keep updates with for maintenance. Got it. That way on that calendar, I see day for day what they had done. And it's also a quick reference to notes and things like that. Right. So I don't have to go back to the original Got invoice. It. Love that. So it's, it's quick Such reference. Such a great idea. So uh, if more people implemented that, there would be less detailers worried about 
how much they're charging, price, how to get the oh, next goodness. new client. It like and eliminates it all them. that because you're essentially stuffing your calendar forever. And here's the catch. So what I really like is that, you know, when you offer some of these guaranteed coding systems, right. it doesn't matter the brand. We also complement that with an in-house, uh, in-house performance guarantee. Okay. Explain what that is. Basically, I will guarantee the performance of your coding as long as you come back for one Got seasonal it. and one annual maintenance. Got it. Because that will allow me to monitor how you're caring for it, manage expectations, and then if something does happen, you're I can catch it, it, fix it, and make it right. And it's just for performance, though. Right. It's not you know, the cosmetic value if you scratch sure. it or if it gets scaled with water spots or gets water spot damage. It's a great idea. It's for performance. It could be scratched as can be. Right. It could be water spotted. But if it's performing, you're good. I'm, I'm good. The neglect is Love on that. you. Right. Love that. The end user is no idea. different than going to the dentist. Right. I handed you the whole Cadillac with right. floss, tooth, uh, yep. toothpaste, all the top line yep. stuff that you wanted to pay for. You didn't use it. You came back to me. I got in there with my fancy tools, right. polishers, right. my fancy lights, scan grips, and I saw, Filed hey, now I got to charge you more because you didn't take care of right. it, so you got to build up that I got to spend time getting off. Love that. It's a great idea. And you're touching the car more frequently. You're yeah. touching the customer and more frequently. They're not going to go. Yeah. Why would they go anywhere else? There's no reason yeah. to. And I'm not, and, and, and they're getting it. And the thing is, is they're getting that fixed rate too. Right. Where that seasonal maintenance is say 160, that annual is 290. Right. After the annual, that first year or second year, I'm also putting a top layer of ceramic on there for right. no additional charge. Got it. Reason why? My connections in the industry. Right. You know, I buy at a rate that allows me to basically capitalize on a price point that right. will allow me to deliver that to my customer at a fair rate that's included in the rate they're already spending yep. so they don't have to get charged more. I'm not nickel and dime in there. Right. They see that 290 and they know that they're taken care of. Right. So I'm, I'm guaranteeing that, that system no matter what. I love that. I'm so glad I asked that question. I feel like that was just straight gold. So <laughs> I don't know how to transition so over to So that's good. And then, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then if we want to, we could go into the new graphene coatings that I've been playing yeah. with. But we'll stop there because that's a whole other deep subject <laughs> if we get into that. Maybe if we have time after talking about yeah. pads, but <laughs> I didn't know, and, and I'm, I would imagine it's a challenge every year to try to figure out how do you innovate with something like pads. And I think you guys have consistently done it year after year after year from the Oreo pad on, and I'm sure for the whole history of this company. But tell us about this innovation, this product that you guys have released for 2019 or 2020, So with the Reflection Artist branding, it's, it's, it's more of a brand culture right. that we brought to the table to reface Buff and Shine and make it sexy. You know, to turn it into something that has more popularity, more recognition, um, and then also bring something to the forefront because everybody knows us as a great pad manufacturer. Um, but they don't, the, the industry doesn't recognize us as the, as the go-to pad people. Now we are obviously, right. but I mean, as far as like when you think pads now more relevantly, it's you, you think of the big names yep. and you think Buff and Shine. Right. As to where in the past, everybody knew that Buff and Shine was a major player for making right. pads. But, but not the player. But not the, correct. So that's where we were able to do that and make it to where now you see reflection artists, it becomes more of a brand culture. And with that, it allows us to really drive the demo team and put them forward because these are the guys like myself that are in the field, day in and day out, in their shops with R&D, with these pads. Right. These are their go-to pads. And, you know, existingly, it's a five-pad set. Three out of five of those pads are pads that have had a very success, you know, great success in regards to already being out there with our Eurotech line. Right. You know, our yellow, maroon, and then our Euro fiber yep. the, with the black fibers here. They've already had a good track record. So we took what those pads already had to deliver and then added two more with our blue, which is a, what we call our blueberry pad. Okay. And then our blend, our wool blend. So with that, now we have a complete five pad system. And what that does is it allows us to give you a yellow polishing pad, a blue for heavy polishing, a maroon for medium cut, which is a great all in one pad yep. as far as like being able to it's my cut favorite for all in yeah ones. it's it's totally it's, so you have three foam base pads then you get into two fiber base pads you have a great cut and and, and finish pad for microfiber but then you get into this wool blend as you notice there's no interface is this a brand new pad or has that's this, a brand new pad okay, i got it because i think i've had it 
Well, we've had it out for okay. a little while. There's a lot it. of R&D behind it. And Got again, it. that's where we want to be with, with getting it into the technicians and detailers' yeah. hands so we could get a proven testimony. Right. This is below our Euro wool pad that we released, the white one. Yes. So this is a blend. It has two different fibers. It allows to still deliver a great cut. It's the same blend as my hairy... Looks like it, yeah, but really capitalize on the finish. And, and yeah. where the white one didn't finish out as good, this one does. Got but it. you also got to think in perspective on softer paints. If you go super aggressive with that wool pad that's white, right. there's a lot more micro scratching and a right. scratch pattern that you're going to have to fight to pull out for your final right. polishing step. A lot of hazing. Correct. Right. So with this, on the other hand, it's still going to accomplish the same level of defect removal okay. with less hazing. Got it. So it allows you not to have to fight that second step as much. And that's just because of the fibers of the pad? Correct. And then the energy. You're getting energy directly from the machine right. to the paint because there's no interface. Interesting. Yeah. So, wow. and, and again, this pad system, what's really unique about it is, one, 70-80% of current paints on the market, it, it will accomplish full correction on. Wow. Two... It accommodates all machines, rotary, gear driven, standard DA, and long throw, both 15 and 21. Wow. So now you got a pad system that no matter how many machines you have in your arsenal, you've got basic pads. And you've got five to choose from. Right. And this will work with all liquid abrasives, and it's just a matter of manipulating that liquid abrasive right. to its full potential just by changing your pad. Which is what I was talking to someone else earlier about. I think it was Rubez. They came out with like Uno something, yeah. right? And I'm like... I think we've even talked about that in previous years of like, it's going to come down to a, a one or two liquid situation, yeah. and then you're just going to change up the pad depending upon what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Right? And that's a great product. I had the opportunity to play with okay. that product in, in uh, Shine Supply, Ventura, okay. when I went out there Got for it. his reunion. Yep. And I used all the pads with that product. So good tip, the maroon pad is the absolute at. best pad for that product. Got it. Cool. I mean, the, the results we were able to get, yep. and I challenged it against quite a few things that I had there on the on yep. the on the test panel we were working with. That maroon pad kicked Did butt it. with that with that product from Rupes. That's awesome. And man. that's what I love about being, you know, in in the gray area of dealing with pads. <laughs> yeah. I get to bounce around. I get to do all right. this R and D with all these different liquid abrasives and give real world feedback. Right. You know. And you can stay like objective. Yeah. And if I don't like it, I'll tell you. Right. You know, and that's yep. the thing. And and, and if it's just it's just real feedback yeah one thing we were talking about yesterday with julio is like putting it in this kit i think is an innovation in and of itself Correct. because there's so much pad confusion right it with simplifies. the colors and it really simplifies the whole process almost like it's almost like a i want to say a sample kit but it's not a sample kit because they're actual pads that you can use but it gives a sampling or it gives you a system to go by i guess well right? it gives you here there's two different perspectives of that there's the end user the detailer where they get a kit like this and they 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 were so confused on pads that finally right. they have okay i tried this one i tried that one oh i like that i see right. where this one picks up from where this one leaves off right okay now i want to go buy five more of these ones but i still need to use that other one so let me pick up a couple of these right so now and then they start to realize that they're within this five pad spectrum that right. they don't have to exit out of right and then on the distributor side, it helps. Now you're selling a kit, not just a pad. Got it. Now you sold five pads compared to the one pad. Right. So now your numbers as a distributor and business owner up. changed as well. So and it's a win-win for everybody. Six inch. Are, are you eventually going to go down, or are they going to eventually go down to maybe a three inch? So the kit itself, yes. The kit itself comes as a five and six inch, but each individual pad so this goes down, this goes six to one. Got it. Six, five, three, two, and one for the yellow. Got it. Six, five, three, two, and one for the blue, the maroon. And then when we get into our fiber base, it's six, five, and three. Got it, okay. So we do have those smaller sizes to accommodate. Right. They just don't come in a kit kind of Got category. It. But you could buy the kit, figure out which ones you like and love and are reach for the most. And when you need a refill, you can buy that individual pad. Correct. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. No, and then you're right, though. But this this, this just simplifies everything. Yep. Color coding, figuring out what's best. And then what I like, too, is that we were still very reasonable on how we approach this because, as you notice, there's not a real fine polishing pad. Right. And there's not a real aggressive right. compounding pad or cut pad. Right. The reason why is because we know 
that whether they're using ours or somebody else's, that somebody has their most favorite cut pad for defect removal. Got it. It could be twisted wool. It could be, there's so many options like out the there. Extre you stayed away from the far extremes. Yes. Got it. So for that reason, we left it open. Use that and then come back to this. Got it. Same thing with the finishing. There's some in our brand lineup and there's right. some in others that people just love. Right. We don't want to take them away but from that. But they already know what they already know which pads those yes. are. You're yes. not trying to retrain them for no. that. No. We just, just the, the wanted core, to the add bulk. value to the yes. core of what's yes. there. So what I'm sure you've had plenty of time to to play with this as a kit. What in your shop are you reaching for the maroon the most? Or what pad do you maroon the most okay. on one between maroon and blue okay. as one steps. Got it. Um, on our annuals, when we have to do a light polish, we're on the yellow or blue okay. because we don't want to get too heavy. We're right. not looking to, you know, take away from the base of the protection. Right. You know, and, and its integrity. Right. So just enough to pop it. As far as cutting, our go-to has been this because of how well it finishes out. Got and it. And our follow-up from the Euro wool blend as our cut and our leveling is either the blue or the yellow depending upon the softness or hardness of the paint system. Got it. So it, it, that's that's what's really revolutionized to know that this kit is, I don't want to say fail proof, but it's pretty damn solid. Right. For 99.99% of the things that detailers are going to come across, there's a pad in here that could yeah. solve their problem. Yeah. And with right. whatever machine you work with, wow. we got your back. That's so you could thing. put all these on a rotary too. Except for the microfiber, but got that it. should be common knowledge. Um, right. But I've seen otherwise, Got um, it. you know, it, it, to each his own. But what size pads are those? This is our 30-inch. <laughs> uh, so you know, back when you're doing two, an RV, back in the 2000s <laughs> when 20-inch rims were the thing. Yeah, we're, we're we're starting a new phase. We're going with the 30-inch pad. Got it. You know what I mean? So, so you can do the whole whole door. That's right. Just that's just right. I'm, I'm thinking more of flat panel RV. Yeah. Yachts, okay. you know. Right. You know, that way we could really. The only problem is now the machine companies has to catch up with yeah. us. Yeah. There's no backing plate big enough yet. No, That's right. There's no attachment <laughs> for that yet, Julio. Maybe so, next year. Uh, I heard there was a Rupes uh, 500 millimeter coming out. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, you attach it to the side of your car and then you move next to the car. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, I think these are awesome. What is there any other new pads that are out or any other new innovations that we need to cover or uh, I want to get into the graphene coating a little bit if you want to but so as far as you know pads go no I, okay. I again our newest is going to be that blueberry heavy yeah. polish okay. and then um, you know the euro wool blend um, and this kit in general I mean putting it together the way that we have it's I mean, going to definitely incredible exactly it's definitely going to take a different approach yep. to our existing success yeah and it's just going to complement everything and our branding of the reflection artist yep culture is, is really getting more gaining popularity and traction yep. it's been so awesome to see and this is what i love year after year doing podcasts together with you and other people it's like you really see the growth of not only people uh individually but also the brands and how yeah because it's not an easy thing i think people underestimate how difficult it is for an established brand like buff and shine that's been around for a long time and has a proven track record to kind of pivot and not conform itself, but advance itself to what the industry is doing and how the industry is growing. And that's not an easy, it's really easy to just stay back and say, well, this is how we've always done it. Yeah. You know, but to actually go out and try different things and try to not rebrand, but refresh the brand. Take a chance. Take a chance. Yeah. It's not easy. Yep. It's very difficult. And to see you guys do it and then it not only work, but, but, pick up a bunch of momentum along the way has been awesome to see. Yeah, I know it has. You know? And especially, you know, with a lot of existing clients that, you know, before my time, you know, Rich has been doing this since 87. Right. So they've got a lot of long-term clients and being able to see them see the same vision and right. come on board. Because a lot of times us. your customers don't want change either. Exactly. And it's hard and to convince them that the change is good. That's you the know? other uphill battle. Right, right. So, um, being able to see that and then, you know, with everybody just really embracing what we're doing it's it's nice to know that we're doing it and doing it in the right direction right. as a whole. Can you keep it down over there, Julio? Um, that's awesome. So, do you want to talk about graphene coatings or no? Sure, or, we can. Yeah, absolutely. So, what are your thoughts on it? So far, um, I'm or digging how about it. on graphene in so, general? Yeah, you know, I know that there's a lot of issues with health stuff with graphene that I've seen come up. But, you know, that's just another, I think, there may be. 
But that's just another negative take on just like anything else. There's there's health issues with everything. Think about all the compounds and polish that we've inhaled in our career. I mean, come on. Right. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, we don't know the adverse effects of a lot of these things, the coatings in general. It doesn't matter what it is, what the chemistry makeup of it is. Right. Whether, you know, the the active ingredient, the carrier solvent, all those things that on, on a chemical level. So to, to, for someone to make those statements and put that content out into the web, you know, it's... It, I mean, I use hydrofluoric acid all the time. Duh. That's you know not, a, I mean? good, it's, that's not really, a good chemical. <laughs> yeah. The sky is blue. Oh, right. and yeah. Tell right. me something I don't know. Right. So anyways, moving forward on the positives. But that could be kind of to reference what we just talked about with change as yeah. new products and new new uh, verbiage for products come out. Just like when people, ceramics started really taking its track. People don't like change. They don't want to change. And you know, so their first gut reaction is to be negative on it, you know? I've worked with brands that were completely against the ceramic movement and they've released their own ceramic based products. Right. So it just goes to show that, you know, Sometimes to your it just point. Takes time. To your point, correct. Right. So with the graphene you know, what intrigued me was the testing that was done. For example, I seen a gentleman who had tested a premium level coating brand that was well respected on one side view mirror and put a, a single layer of the graphene based coating on another. Drove through a bug season for a couple of weeks, let it dwell. One mirror with the coating, the ceramic on it, the bug splatter was still there. The skipping was still there, still cleaned off nicely. Uh, a little bit of an impression maybe from the bug that stayed on there too long, sure. but it was to the coating itself. Right. Everything a coating should do. Right. And then you go to the graphene side. No bug, spa- no bug splatter. At all. It skipped off. Really? And wiped right off. And to my understanding, the hydrophobic or the contact angle. Average contact angle is 110, 115. Okay. Give or take on the brand or the chemistry. Graphene is around 125. And there's people who have reported bird dropping sitting on there for weeks and not touching. So this could this potentially solve the water spot issue? That's the biggest. That, that's okay, that that's happens with going into the yeah. So it, it, the reduction of water spots is tremendous. Got the it. element build, you know, the atmospheric elements as the water passes that people claim to be, right? You know, acid rain. That's what obviously that's left behind as the water dissipates. Right. And so the the atmospheric elements as they dwell on the surface they heat up. Right. Yada yada. They create etching, water right. marks, or well water, and right. whatever it may be. But it has completely—I don't want to say eliminated, but but it's coming. It's it's almost there. It's Got pretty. It. And it's pretty gnarly. Do you think they're going to be more expensive than coatings as we know them now? Do you think the graphene products are going to be more expensive? I'd say they fall. They're going to fall right into the same price point categories. Got it. I mean, most of your. Pro level coatings range anywhere from a buck thirty, buck fifty on up to two fifty right. per fifty mil bottle right. on average. Be right and in I there. think that's where they'll fall right into that category. So price point won't change much. It will just be overall um, results Got it. and application. So what what advice do you give to the detailer out there that either has a shop or mobile or whatever and is kinda starting to see this graphene thing happen? What's your suggestion to them? Because I mean, I've been in the industry since 2008, and like, it was like synthetic clays then, yeah. and then coatings, and we've seen kind of like a long ramp up with these things. Remember like when used we used to upsell clay bar? Upsell clay bar? Uh, upselling clay bar. I still do, but whatever. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but but we've seen the, the ramp, or maybe it was microfiber towels before then, yeah. right? From Terry Towels. And we've, we've traditionally seen like a longer ramp up to full adoption to these new technologies. But it seems like this graphing thing, like just got kind of mentioned like three months ago, two months ago. I know there was some testing, long-term testing being done before that, but do you think the adoption period for new technologies is gonna be quicker and quicker? And what advice would you give to detailers because of that? Yes, the adoption would be better, uh, more accepting. What my fear of detailers is they're getting so brand dedicated got it they're they're leaving themselves vulnerable for totally not being agree. able to change not accepting something that's innovated because they're cornered themselves with a specific product and or brand and or painted their shop to match the color of that brand 
Got it. You know what I mean? Yep. So with that, you got to be open-minded. In order to stay innovative, it's not about the label on the bottle. It's about the chemistry in the bottle. Right. So always keep your description of what you're using open-ended. We are using a four to five year coating. Right. We are using a product that does this. Not we're using this brand to do that. Right. We're using this. So when you're able to be innovative and replace that category with something new and better, even though it fits the longevity statement, but you've updated the chemistry, right. you're not held to that brand. Right. You're so just smart. filling the void in that category to update it. Because your brand, your detailing brand, your company brand should be above that's what all matters. those. That's what matters. That's what matters. It should be above matters. all those other brands anyway. Who the the, the what the, the label on the bottle? Doesn't that matter? It doesn't matter. Right. Yes, it can be a tool. Sure. They're all tools. Right. The marketing that they give you could be a great tool right. to help drive customers to your right. door. But it's what you do from there to take over once they get to your door that makes a difference in your personal brand. 100%. Love that. Love that. This has been incredible. I want everyone to go buy a kit. How can people follow you on, on social? How can they follow Buff and Shine? How can they go buy these pad kits? So with us, we are a manufacturer. So unfortunately, you cannot buy directly from Buff and Shine. What you can do is you could go to the Buff and Shine website and look at the distributor tab. That will drop down and give you all your local distributors throughout the U.S. Which is perfect because it saves on shipping. Correct. <laughs> and or if you do have a local, you know, box truck distributor company or a storefront, you know, and they do offer Buff and Shine brand, you know, ask them. The more you demand, then they'll start to probably bring it in. Yep. Most of our distributors are on board. So just look in there at your and local. And for the other ones, get on board. And for the other ones, get smooth. on board. You almost snuck or right I will in there. hunt you down. <laughs> I will travel city to city, state to state, and find you and put these by your front door right. every day. <laughs> I will block your entrance with stacks of boxes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> no, so you'll find it there. Um, and then, of course, with me, uh, you can find me uh, social media. Most of my stuff is my name for my personal brand, yep. Justin Lobato. Yep. Um, so, uh, and. Uh, you know, I'm on Instagram, but it's my shop name. It's JL underscore showroom underscore detailing. Not um, a lot of the stuff I do industry basis for me and for everybody yep. in the industry. So uh, when I say for me, meaning it's my, by my name, yeah, that's yeah, the brand yeah. I go by. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, because obviously detailers aren't going to come to me for a quote to get their car right. done. Right. So detailers uh, aren't your target market. Yeah, that's not <laughs> nowhere near. That's why you know, and, and to touch on that, that's where like my my business page. I market towards consumers right. about stuff, and then on my personal page, I'll share it Got to my it. personal page, but on my personal page is when I'll do the marketing for the industry Smart. stuff, so details can see what I'm doing, what yep. I'm using. And then copy or replicate. and Exactly. Right, so, totally. And, and you got to separate that. you you got to come to terms yep. with the fact that there is different sides to it, yep. and you've got to manage those sides. Yep. But yeah, you can find me. You can reach out. We have demo team members that you can see posting online. You can reach out to them. Uh, as far as East Coast representation uh, for distribution, you have Clint Hintz, and yep. then West Coast is Julio Mondragon. So, <laughs> Mondragon. <laughs> Mondragon. <laughs> he loves to say it. I, I do. I say it. I go to sleep every time after say my it. prayers. I say his last name. <laughs> That's amazing. Justin, thanks again. I appreciate your time and, yeah, and no. all the information that you share both personally and professionally. Yeah. It's really helpful. Appreciate it. Yeah, and for everybody who continues to listen to Jimbo's podcast, keep I'm listening because there's always some rich content that you you're go. putting out, bro. Seriously. Thanks for helping. Thanks for helping out with that, man. Yeah. I appreciate it.